Hello, everybody. My name is Masashi. I'm the Festival and Exhibitions Director. I hope you enjoyed the film. Um, you are here for our centerpiece presentation of Definition, Please. Just so you all know, our centerpiece at CAMFest is an opportunity for us to celebrate a rising voice um, in narrative or documentary. And uh, Definition, Please is one of those films that when we saw it, uh, just we really fell in love with it. And I couldn't think of an, a better film for our centerpiece presentation. Um, we have three of the amazing people who made this happen with us right now. So I'd like to bring in writer, director, producer, actor, Sujata Day. And um, we've got Ritesh Rajan, who is one of our main actors and also Anna Kaja. So welcome. Thank you for participating. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. How are you all doing tonight? Great. Great. Very well. Happy to be here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's great. Um, so let's start with the origins. Uh, Sujata, let's talk about, you mentioned, um, we talked a little bit earlier that this was something in your mind maybe about five years ago, but you started writing the script a few years ago. Can you talk about it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I like to take it all the way back to fourth grade when <laughs> I won I won my class spelling bee. Yes, oh, wow. yes, I'm a champion. Um, <laughs> uh, it wasn't like that big of a win though, because there were only ten people in my grade. Uh, but then I went to regionals and I lost in the first round on the word radish. I spelled it with two D's instead of one, and you know I was devastated. But my uh, teacher chaperone was very kind and loving and was like, "No, it's fine. Everything's fine." And so ever since then, I started watching the spelling bee on ESPN and had a fascination with it, pretty much because every year it seemed like a South Asian American kid was winning the B. So cut to 2015 when I was in a UCB sketch writing class and I decided to write a sketch entitled, Where Are They Now Spelling Bee Winners? And if you look up the spelling bee winners, they're all doing amazing things. They work at NASA. They're probably working on the COVID vaccine. They're, you know, <laughs> designing robots. And so the button of my sketch was, okay, well, this champion turns out to be a loser. And <laughs> then in 2016, I did the Sundance Screenwriting Lab. In 2017, I went to Sundance Film Festival for the first time. And my friend Justin Chons film group Gook premiered there. And so I had a discussion with him afterwards and I asked him, how did you make this happen? I need to know everything. And he said, I just did it. I just gathered money from my friends and family. We just made it happen. And I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. So then I started writing the script in 2017, did a lot of rewrites, went into it in 2018, had a pretty decent shooting script ready in 2018. And then I pitched it to a couple of producers that I knew and people really loved the script, but it was one of those movies where, you know, if you don't have like a Brad Pitt or a Kate Blanchett attached, then it's not going to get greenlit. <laughs> so then I, in 2019, I went back to Sundance and Justin's other movie, Miss Purple was playing there. And I was like, what am I doing with my time? I said I was going to do this movie like two years ago. <laughs> so, um, so then I just, I just, I got some money from um, a TV show that I had sold recently, and it was returned back to me along with a huge paycheck. So I was the first money into my film, and I decided to shoot it June of 2019, come hell or high water, and that's what what I did. That's. That, wow, that's really great. Um, I do want to mention, I, I should have mentioned at the beginning, if you all have questions for Sujata, for everyone here on this panel, underneath the player, you can ask questions in that box. And later on in this q and I will start to ask those. Um, you know, you, uh, Sujata, I knew you as, at, at the beginning as an actress, also as a director, um, but I think actor acting, um, come so natural natural to you, or at least it seems that way. Um, in this film, you have such a great cast that you're working with. So can you talk about Ritesh and Anna bringing them on board and you're the family right here. Can you talk about the dynamics of working together um, on this film? Yeah, of course. So um, something that I 
leaned on and I was really happy about is that I have a really great South Asian American entertainment community that I'm close with in Los Angeles. So with Tesh, we had met a couple of years ago. Um, we were on an Asian American and entertainment panel, I think like two or yep. three years ago. Three? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think it's probably close yeah. to three now. Yeah. yeah, close to three years ago. And mm -hmm. then we just clicked right after and we actually made a music video of a parody <laughs> of uh, A Whole New World called A Diverse Film. And uh, so we've worked together before and mm -hmm. he was one of my top choices for the role of the brother. So I basically, I didn't have any auditions for the film. So I texted Tesh and I said, hey, uh, I mean, he can tell the story better because my version of the story is like not his version of the story. <laughs> but I was just like, hey, here's, I want you to be in this movie. But apparently like we went to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we went to uh, Rock Rock Kitchen, and we're there. And I think we were laughing because they had they had samosas. So we were laughing about that because it's like you know, it's like all different types of Asian food in this one restaurant. So we're like, ah, we're gonna get samosas. Uh, and she's like, hey. So you know, she had mentioned to me that she was working on this movie, um, and you know, kind of just in passing. And she's like, yeah. So I finished it. And she just kind of looks at me and she's like, and I want you to be in it. And I just started laughing because I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is cool. But I'm going to read it first. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read it. I read it, obviously. And it was amazing and lovely and such a powerful story about, you know, this um, American Indian family and all the ups and downs they go through. And I just thought, what an opportunity to kind of represent this type of character and just be able to represent the South Asian community in America in this type of non-stereotypical way. And, and I was like, it was an automatic yes once I read it. And then- That's great. And did you want to bring in Anna as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with Anna, I, I met her briefly at the East West Gala, and that was last year. And then she was good friends with my friend Vinny. And so I, when I was thinking of the mom, I thought she would be a great mom because she's played a lot of Indian Americans' moms in, throughout TV. <laughs> and, yeah. and also Tesh's mom. She has played Tesh's mom in the past. Yeah. And, yeah. and I didn't know that when I cast her. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, she was someone that I found through Vinny Chibber. And I texted Vinny or I might have called Anna and said, hey, would you want to read the script? I would love for you to play Jaya, the mother. And then she read the script and, and said, yes, luckily. Yeah, yeah. And I was super excited because I, even though Tesh didn't know, I knew that he was attached to play mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. but I, did, I, I, I didn't text you. No, you know, I didn't, she, she, um, Suge actually texted me that you were in it. And I was like, ah, whatever, she's whatever, she's I right. Like play, cause I thought she, I thought Suge knew that she had played my mom on a freeform show for a couple of seasons and Suge had no idea. So she was immediately worried like, oh, is she not good? Do you not like her? What's going on? And I was like, nah, she's been my mom forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was like, it's I perfect. So working. it ended oh up. God, did I like, did I hire an asshole? Like is she gonna be <laughs> on set or like what's gonna happen? The exact cause opposite. I have like a no assholes policy, so. <laughs> Right. No, but so that was really nice, you know, because I think we yeah. all entered already sort of feeling like family and yes. Tesh and I certainly had already spent time as actors just kind of building that familiarity, building mm -hmm. that bond. Um, and uh, yeah. And, and also I think, you know, when you do a lot of TV, some, you kind of get used to sometimes being the only person of your, uh, you know, the only South Asian on the show, the only South Asian in the episode, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so I think it just felt like home in so many, so many ways. And I think we had a really good time amidst this uh, very, uh, very quick shoot. And I think it also mm -hmm. felt like home because, you know, we shot, uh, we shot much of the film in Sujata's family home. And yes. so we're just oh, wow. taking, you know, we're absorbing that as you're playing these characters, I found very helpful. Yeah, and Anna, you mentioned 
kind of the terms home and trust. And I, you know, when I think about this film, uh, Sujatha, and this is a credit to your writing and kind of your ambition as a storyteller, you know, I think of, uh, and you talked about kind of your own personal story and how it started, you know, each character, there's layers. And, you know, through the film, you learn so much about them and kind of what makes them tick. And I think that I would assume that trust and that sense of safety to um, be able to play these types of roles is important. And um, I imagine, I mean, maybe it's my hope that you're friends with everyone on this cast because this cast, everyone seems like they're having fun together, even in moments that are not quote fun. I, <laughs> I have this sense that everyone's in this together, right? I, I feel this energy that you're all creating. Um, you know, Ritesh, one thing that I mentioned right before we came on board is for your role, um, I potentially has the biggest arc. And yes, I would assume, right? And I'm curious how you approach this role um, and knowing that it's gonna go through this real roller coaster for this character. You know, for me, one of the most important things was that I was portraying uh, the mental illness with authenticity. You know, I didn't wanna phone it in. I didn't wanna overplay it. I didn't wanna exaggerate it. Um, you know, I just wanted to respect um, the the character. I wanted to respect Suja's vision. Um, and so, you know, we had a, lo a lot of discussions about how we wanted this to come off, the tone, sort of the levels of intensity. Um, but, you know, for me, we, we decided that this character was someone that struggled with borderline personality disorder. And so the moments of the film that you're seeing are not necessarily, you know, the moments that he, you feel like he's good, he's actually not in a consistent, stable space. I, I was playing him, you know, kind of in a almost manic depressive, but if he was happy, it was an inconsistent seven. And that would swing to something that would explode, something that would trigger him. So he was, he was unable to stay at a five and, and be able to, control his emotions. You know, he's very much being affected by the stimuli that's going on. So my goal was to not only bring that to the forefront in sort of a, a as realistic as possible, but also bring up the larger question of, you know, South Asians and how they deal with mental health and how that affects the family dynamic, the relationships that, that um, affects with his mother, the relationship that affects with his sister and then the family as a whole. That's wonderful. Yeah. And Sujata, you know, I, I, I've already, talked about your writing and testament to that. I think that even for this character, when there is a solution and in a more conventional movie, that's kind of the end. Then there's like a happy, you know, then we move on. Whereas I think what you do so wonderfully is you take this, you take these situations and put some realism to them that it's not easy fixes, right? And so I really do appreciate um, the storytelling that you're doing here and, um, and how you're pushing audiences and really challenging audiences to kind of, to look at what the reality is. You know, when I think of this film, I think of so many different topics, mental illness being one of them, also this coming of age story, this intergenerational kind of immigrant parent story. So Jatha, when you were developing the script, like were, was all of that in there to start? Like were these key things that you were thinking about or did you have one thing and then as you added more characters, you started to approach other stories? I think uh, for any of my scripts or projects, I always start with one one little thing that's real. So a very tiny thing that's real that has happened, which was like, oh, I won a spelling bee. Okay, so then I won the spelling bee as a kid, and let's say I become an adult, and then I have not achieved anything else in my life. That was the peak of my success. So how I developed the script was, okay, what are the reasons why Monica did not become a success like her other fellow champion spelling bee winners. And I decided on her relationship with her family. So that's what kind of made the skeleton of the film. So I was like, okay, what is Monica's relationship with her mother? And she's living at home. And what is that relationship like? What is the arc of that? And then how is it affected when her estranged brother comes home? So I kind of just, had the skeleton of the story from my premise and I decided to weave into the the situations more like what's important in these relationships and what's what's her relationship with her best friend what's her relationship with 
this guy that she had a crush on when she was younger and happens to re-meet. So it's told through the eyes of her relationships with all of these people. And that really drove the script and drove the mm -hmm. story into where it was. And I wanted it to be very authentic and real and grounded with those moments of kind of absurd absurdity slash magical realism that pops in. But I, I wanted it all to be from a place of groundedness and, and from the hearts of these characters. That's great. Yeah. I mean, on a side, uh, side note, uh, as you talked about your, your love interest, Jake Choi was a great pick. He's quite charming <laughs> and adorable in this film. He has that natural charm to him. Um, this is maybe a tricky question, but you know, you, for this project, you wore so many hats, right? Uh, writer, director, producer, actor, and I'm sure there's others in there. What was the most challenging of those hats? And what was, and uh, maybe a secondary question, what was the most rewarding after going through this feature film? So the most challenging was, I suppose, the producer aspect of it. W moving forward, I never want to be a producer again. <laughs> 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 so I, I will say raising the money. And that's for any independent mm -hmm. filmmaker, they'll probably tell you that. But once you're in it, you're trying to raise the money, you're talking to everyone you can and being like, yo, do you have a rich cousin? Do you have a rich uncle? <laughs> rich best friend who lives in the Bahamas or whatever, it doesn't matter, you know? And so you're just like continuously talking about money and it sucks because that's the non-creative aspect of the whole thing. So. So I love writing, I love directing, I love acting. Directing a feature for the first time was so, so fulfilling and rewarding. And to work with the crew that I had, to work with the actors that I had, everything just went swimmingly. And, and it was a testament to, you know, I'm just really happy that I picked very amazing people to work with and talented people. and. You know, Tesh, when he, he came over for like, we had like a table read, very casual <laughs> reading of the script at my apartment, maybe like two weeks before we left. And I was like, I was like, okay, we're just like sitting on the couch. We're just gonna read this like real casual. It's not gonna be anything. And he's like bawling on my couch, right? So I'm like, <laughs> uh, inside I'm like, oh shit, I have to get on his level acting wise. Like, <laughs> Well, it's so funny because I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of her. I didn't know what she was going to say. I wanted to come ready. You know, I, I knew how important this was to her and I knew what kind of opportunity she was, she gave to me, you know, I didn't have to go through this process. So I was very gracious to her to, to, you know, be able to play these characters. So I, I didn't want to drop the ball, you know, I wanted to make everything look good. <laughs> including her so even, which you did even with anna coming on board i some of my favorite scenes are with anna like even just like in the bed just chatting with anna and playing jaya like that that that's one mm -hmm. of my favorite scenes to shoot and just like be to watch in the movie because it just it just is calming to me and yeah. so just having anna there she was such a great you know calming presence and even if we were like rushed to do scenes or like, you know, didn't have enough time. I, I felt like I could just sit into it because her energy was just very soothing. That's great. Um, we have a question from Lauren. Um, um, first off, she says how much she enjoyed the film. And she, she has a question about LeVar Burton and how you got him to be in the film. That's a great question. I love the people. <laughs> so I am part of this uh, every Sunday group called Blurred Brunch, where before COVID hit, we would go brunch at a restaurant. And it's black and brown creatives, writers, directors, producers, actors. Across the board, we just come and we talk about, we eat brunch, we talk about comic books and comic book movies and just nerdy, nerdy stuff. And one day LeVar was walking outside the restaurant and our other friend Yvette Nicole Brown, who's also a producer on this film, um, she saw him and was like, oh, it's LeVar, I'll go get him. And then we were like, what? <laughs> so 
<laughs> you get brings Lavar to the table, and like two of these like really macho guys just start crying, and then and then he just introduces them to everybody. And and something awesome that he did that day, he was meeting us all for the first time, and he he was like, "Take out your phones. Here's my phone number. Text me your phone number." And he just like shared his number with all of us, and you know, like. I think it was like a year later, I was like, oh, I have this role for him. So I just texted him and he said yes. And he read the script and he said, I can't believe you you wrote this little monologue exactly in my voice. Like he couldn't believe it. And I was like, oh my God, that's the biggest compliment. So that's that's how we got LeVar on board. That That's really inspiring. I mean, I feel like that is one example of so many things that you have mentioned in this Q&A of just doing it. You know, like if you have a project, you make it happen. If you want mm -hmm. LeVar Burton to be in your film, you text him and you say, you know, what do you have, you know, why not, right? Um, so I think that is um, another reason why you made this wonderful film, film happen. Um, I wanted to mention that your film uh, is eligible for two awards at Camp Fest, our audience awards. So people who are watching right now, um, underneath the player, there's a vote button. So if you want this film to win the audience award, you can click that. It's also nominated for our best narrative feature award. Um, last year, the winner was Yellow Rose by Diane Paragas, which is a really Ooh. beautiful film. Um, I, I actually do um, have some news. Um, we've been working on the back end and the juries have made their decisions. And I did want to let you know that uh, Sujata, you have won our best narrative award for Camp Fest Forward. So congratulations. Wait, yes. Oh my God. So, so congrats. Oh my God. Any any thoughts on that? So much. Oh my God, this is our first award. Hey. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Oh my God. That's so cool. <laughs> um, Thank you so well, much. Of course, and um, we'll be sending out more information with the jury statement later on, but congratulations. They really loved it. Um, and they thought that it was an easy win for you to have won this war. They really were big fans of this story. So, wow! Um, you can't wait until the live stream. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> well, um, we are kind of running out of time. So, you know, this is the beginning of your journey. Um, this is uh, one of your first festivals. Again, everyone in the audience, you're one of the first people to really see this new feature. Um, how can people follow along if they want to continue this journey to see where it goes? Where would you recommend people going? Yeah, we have we have all social media handles for it. So we're on Twitter, Defen Please, D E F N P L E A S E. I was like, I did not spelling be championship. Spell radish right now. <laughs> And then Facebook and Instagram were definition please the full full term. And so you can follow all of those three and we're pretty up to date on all of the news. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. Um, Ritesh, Anna, Sujata, congratulations again. Thank you so much for participating. You know, our centerpiece is one of our favorite spots in the festival. And again, I said it earlier. I'm really happy that this year was Definition Please and congratulations. Um, please follow along with their journey and I wanna thank our audiences. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our last day of our festival. So thank you all um, and have a great night.